Hello guys and welcome. It's Engineering Rebel and welcome to my new project. It's an RC car. On this channel, I have restored engines. I have built a go-kart. I've explained how things worked. I've built a cantilever. I've done a variety of projects, but this one is a first because I've never built an RC car ever in my life, but it's always been my dream to do so. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a tour around this chassis, tell you guys what needs to be done and connect the remote control to the receiver so the wheels can move along with the servo for the throttle. So let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get you guys familiarized with the chassis and to show you guys around. So let's start off with this bit. This is the exhaust manifold, this metal piece, and that's its gasket. The bolts are also in place, so all I need to do is to attach the engine to this exhaust manifold. This plastic bit is the muffler, so as the exhaust fumes come through the manifold, they would go into this muffler and the muffler would deaden the sound to make it a little bit more quieter. We got our fuel tank. We also got these two servos. This one is what controls the throttle. This one is what controls the steering. You can see that it's got independent suspension, so there are shocks for all four wheels. We've got this blue aluminum skid plate, and this is what kind of holds everything in place along with these plastic bits, and also this cool grab handle. This is the transmission, and uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a two-speed. And speaking about the transmission, this actually has four-wheel drive. So the transmission has a drive shaft that goes to the rear wheels, and there's also another drive shaft going to the front wheels. So this thing is essentially four-wheel drive. I don't know if this thing has an open diff or an LSD, but I think by the looks of it, I think it's an open diff, but it's okay. At least it's four-wheel drive and it will have decent grip. And finally, this little box is where their receiver will be located, and this little hole is where the antenna will come out of. More on this in a bit. In the future, I'm definitely going to modify this RC car, probably put an aluminum exhaust, change the pool start to aluminum to make it even more durable, and just little things here and there. And I'm hoping to build a very solid RC car. Now, before I connect the remote to the receiver, the first thing I want to do is to install the battery for the remote. So the battery for the remote is a lithium ion rechargeable battery. Now I have to put this plastic cover on and let's see if it works. Yep, the lights turn on and these are a bunch of switches and adjustments. More on this in a bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is to remove this top plate in order to gain access to the power source that will be powering the receiver along with the servo. So let's remove this Phillips screw. And if we remove the top cover, this is the switch and one end will connect to the receiver and the other will connect to the power source. This is going to be the power source. It takes four AA batteries. And this piece connects to the steering servo and this other wire connects to the throttle servo. For the power source, I have to put in four AA batteries. So there is a set on this side and then another two on the other side. Then we would take those batteries and put them on this corner of the box. You don't want to put it on this side because this is where the wires for the servos are located and it's just not going to fit properly. This is the receiver and this longer wire is for the accelerator system and this shorter wire is for the steering system. So first we're going to plug in the accelerator system. So that would go into channel one. The shorter wire is for the steering system and this would go into channel number two. This next piece is gonna go into channel number three and they also gave us a little key for the fail safe, but we're not gonna need that. Now this part is gonna be very important because we're not just gonna take this and plug it into channel number three. We have to do a little something before we do so. So I'm gonna take my thinnest flathead and I'm gonna pry up on this plastic piece in order to get this wire out. This wire we're gonna attach to the VCC, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. So by prying this upwards, like so, but doing it very gently so I don't end up breaking the little tab, this piece will come out. 
just like that. And I'm gonna leave the key on there because I don't want it to get lost. So now is the part where everything comes together. I'm gonna take this piece that I just took this wire out of. So we still got this bit here, which is gonna act like the ground wire that's gonna to attach to channel number three. So I'm gonna take this piece and we're gonna plug it into channel number three. Next, we're gonna take this panel that I removed earlier. We're gonna attach this piece that attaches to the switch to the power source, which is my four AA batteries. Just like this, and which we'll snap in place. Okay. Now I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna put it into this hole of the VCC. The VCC is pretty much what connects the receiver to the switch and from the switch to the power source. So let's plug it in. And we want this clippy side facing out so it can lock in place. And you hear a little snap confirming that it's locked in place. Then we would take this and plug it into the last column, which is the VCC. So it should look like this. Now I have to put all these components back into the box. So we'll curl it up like this. And once I've done so, I'm going to take this antenna wire and run it through this hole. like this and once the lid is in place I will take my plastic sleeve for the antenna and pass it through pull this to lock it in place and that's our antenna finally I'm going to take my two screws and screw this top plate back in place. Now I'm not gonna screw this side completely. I'm gonna leave some room so the plastic doesn't warp. Now we put the one on this side and this side we can actually tighten up all the way. Just like this. And then we come back to this side and we tighten it all the way as well. Now let's see if it worked. So first I'm gonna flip on the remote and then the receiver box. Let's take a look. So let's start off with the steering system. Yeah, success, it works. Now let's check out the throttle system, which is gonna be this piece. If I pull this trigger, Oh yeah, works. <laughs> it's pretty responsive. Let's take a closer look of the mechanisms. Before I end the video, I want to show you guys what these buttons do on the remote. So these two controls are what make it go forward and reverse. So you have reverse and forward. This is what adjusts the on center of the steering system. So the more you tilt it towards this way, the wheels will tilt more to the right. And if you tilt it the other way, it'll tilt more toward the left. So this is an adjuster for the steering system. This is what adjusts the throttle system. So you can adjust how forward you want the throttle to stick and how back you want it to be depending on what engine you put into this vehicle. And this particular one is what adjusts two things, the steering sensitivity and how much you want the wheels to turn. So if I set this on zero, the wheels will barely turn. If I set it on a hundred, the wheels will turn much more and the sensitivity also increases. So thank you guys so much for watching. This build is definitely gonna be a treat please hit that subscribe and like button so you don't miss out. More awesome videos in regards to this project are coming. I will see you guys in the next one.